Our goal in this video is to add the nearby homes. So what you should do even more before starting to follow along with this video is go and add a few more homes to your database in and around the area of your current home. And you can maybe add a couple like way far away so that they shouldn't show up in the nearby homes query. So we've got this beautiful one bedroom house here, very modest. Um, downtown Toronto <laughs> and uh, we're going to go add a, que um, a query to pull the nearby homes for this house. So if we go over to the code, let's just close everything out. So we were on this um, index inside of houses ID inside of pages and here's our query where we're asking to load a single house. Now what we want to do is basically be able to ask for give me the nearby homes and give me the ID, latitude, and longitude of those nearby homes. Now this nearby field does not exist yet. So we're going to go to the back end and add this as a field that's available on the house object. So for that, if we go into SRC schema house, we should have the house object type here. And it doesn't really matter where you can add it at the bottom. We're going to see, say that we have a field and it's going to return an array of houses. So with that in place, we can create an async function called nearby and we'll need to pass in the context. So context of type context and the context will give us access to Prisma because to get nearby homes, we have to query those nearby homes. But how are we going to know which homes are nearby? So if you think about um, this map here, you know what? It's failing because I, I'm going to cut those for a sec. There we go. I'll add them back in a second. But if we have this house here showing up at a specific latitude and longitude, what we want to do is sort of draw a box around this location. So we're going to create a bounding box and um, what we'll do is we'll be able to specify the size of the box. So like go out 15 kilometers in any direction from the center. And then we'll be able to grab, I forget which corner it is. It's like the top right and the top left of this sort of virtual bounding box. We're going to draw around this uh, house and we'll be able to say, find me all the other houses inside of this one. So I'll just add these back in, even though, Currently it breaks my site because this doesn't exist yet, but that's okay. We're going to do that right now. So how do you build this bounding box? There's actually a function we're importing from geolib called get bounds of distance. Oh boy. What is this? Okay. Get bounds of distance and it, when given a latitude and longitude and the distance that you want will return you that those two corners of the bounding box. So that's what we're going to call here. And it's going to give us something called bounds back. So when we call this, we need to pass in an object that has the latitude. So what latitude we want the latitude of the, whatever house we're currently, um, querying. So to get that, we're going to say this dot latitude, and then the longitude would be this dot longitude. And now we're going to pass the number of meters of how big the bounding box should be. So it's up to you. You could say uh, 10. So if you want 10 kilometers, you just add three zeros to the end um, to convert it from because uh, one kilometer is a thousand meters. So we'll save that and then we'll go below. So now that we have this bounding box, we want to requery the database to say, find me all the homes within this bounding box. So for that, we're just going to return the result that Prisma gives us. We're going to access Prisma through the context, the house table, and we're going to say find many because we want to find many homes. So we're going to find them where the latitude. And so what we want to do is we want to say the latitude is greater than sort of the bottom left and less than the top right. So for that, we're going to say it's greater than or equal to the bounds, the first bound bounds sort of looks like this. So it's like an array where there's 
latitude of whatever, longitude, whatever, and there's sort of two of these. So 15 and 20, I don't know, whatever they are. So it's an array where there's two of them. So we're gonna access the first latitude, second latitude, et cetera. Cool. Get rid of that. Okay, so greater than or equal to the, the first bound latitude, less than or equal to the second one latitude, like that. Now we're gonna to wanna to do something similar with the longitude. So I'm just gonna copy and paste that whole line and then convert this to longitude, just like that. So we're saying the longitude is also greater than or equal to this one and it's less than or equal to this one. So we're gonna add one more thing. Um, this would find the house that we're currently on because it's obviously in the bounding box. So we're just gonna say where the ID is not equals to the current ID like this. Now, if you're in a really densely populated place, it could return thousands, millions, billions of homes within this bounding box. So we're just gonna say take, I don't know, 25 of them. So they're not really in any particular order. If you wanted to, you could go and figure out, there's a complicated algorithm for, or calculation for like distancing each house to the one you're looking at to find the like close, find me the 25 closest. I don't care for this example. Just give me 15 random ones. And uh, those are the ones we're gonna show on the map. So now that um, I've built the backend, I can come back here and refresh and we'll see if it works. Perfect, so it doesn't fail anymore, but I haven't shown them yet. So that's what we're going to do now. And what we're actually going to do, if we scroll down here, so I'm, I'm on the page again, where I've added the query to ask for the nearby homes. I'm actually just gonna pass the nearby homes as a separate property, separate prop. So yes, they are available here in this house, but I thought it would be make more sense to just send them separately. So we're gonna say house dot nearby. See, so I'm getting an error here. Property nearby does not exist on type. That's because the code gen that we had previously done is now out of date. So why don't we go fix that first? Um, perfect, just making sure that this schema.gql has been updated. It has. So all I need to do is go down to the console and say yarn code gen. And it will regenerate this and that will fix this here as soon as it, yeah, perfect. So we still have an error because the single map isn't set up yet to receive nearby. So we're just gonna pop over to the single map now. So that would be in components, um, components, single map. Okay. So we go up to the props and we're just going to say that nearby is going to be an array of I houses. So we wanna receive them as the prop in a variable here. And now we just have to iterate over them showing each one as a marker on the map. So it doesn't really matter where you put it in relation to this, sort of this, the, the marker of the house, this one that we're currently looking at. I'll put them below. So I'm gonna iterate over nearby. So I'm gonna map it. And I gotta call it something. I don't wanna call it house because that's um, that's the one that's the, the house that we're looking at. So I'm just gonna call it near. You could call it the near house or any other variable that you want. And each one of these is going to be a marker like this. Remember, since we're iterating this time, we need a key. So this would be the, the near.id. Just gonna save that so we get some formatting. And now we need to add the other fields that are always needed. So latitude of near.latitude, longitude of near.longitude. And um, we're gonna add those same two offset. So we're just gonna do a bit of copy and paste from above paste those in. So now we need to fill in the marker like this. And why don't we start by just copying and pasting the button from above. So because it's so similar, I'll save some time. You're probably gonna copy and paste it too. But then we just need to tweak a couple things. 
So it's not the selected house, it's a nearby house. And we don't want to show the same image because if I, if I were to look right now, which is the house that I'm on? They all look the same. So I wanted to use a different image. So I did have, I had a neat uh, house, what is this called? Home color. I also had a home solid and a home outline. So here I'm gonna use the home solid. It's like a solid white color. So now that we, we know this is the main house and these are the nearby ones that I've also added into the database nearby. But when clicking them, they do nothing. So I just wanted to, to use the link component so that when you click them, they'll take you over to that house. That's the last thing. So head on up to the top, make sure that you've imported link from next slash link. And then we can come down and we can just um, convert this into a link. So we're actually gonna not use a button, but I'll change that in a second. So we're gonna do link Make sure that it's wrapping around the button. Link needs an href. So where are we going to send the user to? We are going to send them to slash houses and then the ID of that house. So that'd be near.id. And um, inside of a link, you don't want a button. You want an A. So convert that A into a button. You can get rid of the type button because that's uh, not needed anymore and then you're good to go. At that point, we changed so much that it might've been just as easy to type it out ourselves. Hey, what you gonna do? Okay, so now this is the button, does nothing. These are the nearby that when clicked will take you over to that house, like this. So you can easily click around and look at the houses that are nearby the one you're looking at. That's it for this video, nice and quick one. So let's move on to the next.